Okay, I got 15, well, I have 14 minutes now to talk about a problem that's existed for 10 years, maybe longer than that. Um, and so let's just do it. What I'm talking about today is basically this function. So in the clock framework right now, we have this function called clock disable unused. And it basically does this pseudocode, which is for every clock in the system, if it's enabled in the hardware and no one's enabled it in software, then just turn it off. And we do this at late and call sync. And we do it at late and call sync because we want to make sure it runs after all the deferred probing happens. But I found out like two weeks ago that that's not even true. And it runs in parallel to deferred probe and also to async probe happening. So it's like basically completely broken. It does not work in any way. And I usually get emails from people like every year or two years, like, hey, I want to fix this. I'm like, great, please do. Please fix this for me because it doesn't work. Right, and we just leave this code in the kernel, and it's still there, and it's, it's just like basically disable stuff all the time, which is really fun, and causes lots of problems. Can I go like with the air? Yeah. Keep okay. that up. So the other problem that we have in the clock framework that basically no one really talks about, unless this topic comes up, is that we don't really know if a clock is enabled when it's registered. We just completely ignore it. So the clock framework tries to cache as much stuff as it possibly can, so that it can make things faster which I don't know if it really is faster. But anyway, we, we don't really know if it's enabled when it's registered. And we don't even know if it's enabled when something calls clock enable on it. And so we may actually go write the hardware again to enable it. So there's actually code out there, like for example, like pillow code, pillow is already running, right? And there's a bunch of sequences that people go through. And so half the time, and if you look at a pillow clock op for enable, it says, is it enabled? Oh, let me just bail out of here. So like the framework is like just calling the clock ops for no reason. And that's, that's another issue that no one really cares to solve or has solved so far. So right now when you register, we don't know at all that it's enabled. And we don't really care until late in it runs and we actually see, oh, is it enabled in hardware? And if it is, then we can save it. The other problem I wanted to say here with this diagram of the ABC is that if these clocks are shared across different clock de controller devices, so you have a struct device for for B, for example, and you have a struct device for A and C, and the A and C clocks exist in one device, and that and all these clocks are on, and the and the driver for B doesn't probe, doesn't register the clock, and it's and then late in it runs, A is going to be turned off, C is going to be turned off, and B is going to die, even though it's technically on, which is bad also, again, right? So that, all this stuff is bad, right? And so what are the use cases? Well, the use cases we have are people want to keep clocks on from the bootloader because they want to maintain their boot splash screen, for example, right? And so they, they don't want late in it to really run and disable their unused clocks, especially if their driver is a module and it hasn't even loaded yet. And so they don't want their clock to be turned off to kill their boot splash screen. The other thing is that we want to save power because people want to turn off clocks that bootloaders leave on because no one's using them. It's just burning power forever if we don't turn them off. And the other thing we want to do is like, oh, I'm on a certain kernel configuration where I don't enable some driver somewhere, right? And so I want to save power again because my kernel configuration doesn't require this clock at all. How do I know, right? So that's that's the topic. And I did it in four, in two minutes, or three minutes. So what are the proposed solutions? So I'm going to go through the proposed solutions. There's like three or four, maybe five of them, but I only have three here because I put them in the proposal. So the first solution proposal was from Cerebona, and that was actually the second one. Anyway, the, it's a basically let's use sync state, right? So what does sync state do? It basically just calls this driver hook when this device's consumers have all probed and gotten their gotten their clocks. That's what you can imagine. So Cerebona basically said, let's enable all the clocks. Let's hold that enable state when we register a clock. So if it's enabled in hardware, keep it enabled the entire time until someone calls sync state on that device driver for the clock that, is, that the clock controller is for. And then uh, if it's ready, so then during late init, we keep the late init code. So all the clock disabling and use code still exists. We basically say, does it have a device registered for it with that? Do we register a clock with a device? If so, completely skip that clock during disabling of unused clocks. We're going to rely on sync state to run it. 
right? I can't even read because there's like this thing on top. Yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so then when sync state, when the sync state logic runs, right, we are basically going to call this generic clock sync state function, and it's going to just go over the entire tree, the clock tree, and then if that device matches that the sync state, like the clock sync state function takes a struct device argument, if that device matches what the clock was registered with, then we'll disable it if it's unused. Right, so we basically just push the lay in a call out for certain devices if they set this clock up, or not the, if they set this device driver function, sync state. Just one quick comment. Sure. So in the ideal world, everybody switches off of uh, you know not using devices for clock drivers, and actually switches to using device stock device for a clock. We can delete the lay in it call if we can get to that point. Right, it's more for legacy right. reasons. You can we need to keep it. So why was it rejected? So one thing is that it calls clock enable basically during registration. And so clocks are gonna be enabled again. It doesn't really do handoff in the sense that it touches the hardware. It's okay. The other thing is that it keeps clocks on for potentially a really long time because we don't know when sync state is actually gonna happen, right? So we don't know when they're gonna call that. That's kind of scary. The other thing is that it relies on devices to be used for registration, which not all clocks in the system are actually registered with struct devices because we have a early registration system for clocks where you can say, oh, I have a device node in DT and I need to register this, right? Because it's really early and it's used by like a timer or it's used by- Just a quick comment. I think a lot of uh, existing drivers abuse it, but they don't need to do it this way because there's like O of clock declare or whatever. They just use it because they copy paste another driver, follow the same yes. method, yeah. So ideally, we can convince them to move off of that and to start reusing actual devices. Everybody has been already convinced. I, did, <laughs> I tell everybody, don't use our clock. Okay. I don't even know what's called, so I, I tell them don't use it. And the other thing that this problem is that we increase the software enable count with this approach, and that could be a problem because somebody may actually call a clock still twice, like from a driver, and they would never know. They would never find it. All right, so that's that problem. Those are those problems. Then we have the, the most, most recent approach from Able, which is do basically the exact same thing, but don't call clock enable during registration and allow that sync state callback to be like general. And so it could be somebody else. It could be like a wrapper or you could call it like something else before or after. It depends on what you want to do. All right, so this is, this is basically the same. The, registra the rejection reasons are pretty much exactly the same, but the other thing is that it doesn't really do handoff at all in the sense because it doesn't really enable it, which is bad. We don't want to turn things off in the middle of the system. And the other thing it doesn't do is it doesn't really deal with that issue where like if you have the clock registered in one device controller or one struct device in another one and that one never probes, like we're going to disable a clock in the middle of the tree and A is going to be turned off and B is going to die. So like C state really didn't work there because we would still disable something if it never probed. So I went way back to the initial approach from Mike to Cat, which is like, how, how can we do this? And it was done in like 2013, this past series, or maybe 2014. So the idea from, from Mike was to like, let's do this all on software, basically. There's no sync state, it didn't exist back then. And what we should do is we should just like say, oh, when this clock is registered, right? If I've set a flag, a clock flag, like a specific flag in my driver saying like, said that it says like, turn this clock on when you, when you enable it, or turn this clock on when you register it, but don't actually touch the hardware. So we're gonna just increment the count, the enable count in software. And we're gonna, and then we're gonna basically clear that flag so that the next enable doesn't matter. So this does, this uh, keeps it on basically until the first consumer of the clock it gets a clock and enables it. And then doesn't really care after that. So like sh if the clock is shared between multiple drivers, it's not gonna do it. Uh, I think that's, yeah. So why was this rejected? Well, we required everybody to like say, oh, I gotta set this clock flag which I mean, kind of 
everybody would have to set the clock flag if they want to do, use the feature. And the other thing is that it didn't really check the enable state like to, by reading the hardware. It just assumed that if you set the flag, it must have been on out of the bootloader, which is not always true. So now we just get the brainstorming. I guess we can start the discussion because I've, I've wasted eight minutes. Hey, would you mind going back to the slide for the one I proposed? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. So uh, the main -ish thing that I think Able was trying to get around was the fact I was calling enable on an already enabled clock. And knowing the specific hardware issue or like the hardware behavior, that hardware just didn't like it. If you write to the enable register again, under some instances, it wouldn't like it. Um, to work around that, we just need to kind of combine, like set the handoff flag so that we don't call enable again for, um, so you basically kind of need to add that kind of thing into my patch so that we don't enable if a clock's already enabled. That's one, right? So that kind of solves this issue. And then the other part about, you know, where the ref count, we can implement it a different way. We don't have to do it through ref counts. I can add another flag to say, look at the ref count, but also look at this flag. If this flag is, you know, it's like a separate yeah, sure. ref count, if you will. That's kind of what I would propose. So that should take care of every, other, every issues that you have registered here, and it should work. I just haven't had the time to get back, and he responded to my patch like a while ago, and I didn't send another patch. So I think I have some brainstorm here. So we can just talk about what other people do real quick, if mm -hmm. you want to, or I can skip this. Basically, regular framework doesn't do anything like this. They read the hardware, they see if it's enabled, and then they have like a DD property that says like, oh, it's enabled out of the bootloader, and then they wait 30 seconds after they're late in it, and just turn off things that are unused. Right? Nothing has changed. And oh. interconnect has this user sync state that actually like scans the entire DT, found, counts how many interconnect providers exist, and then says like once every interconnect provider calls sync state, now I start doing stuff. I start turning things on. Right, that's the other approach. And uh, what I want to do is I basically want to just delete the code. That's my plan. So I really want to just basically say give everybody what they want, which is everyone says clock ignore and use anyway. So I don't know why we're doing this. We should just make it set to true on the command line and just make a config option to do it so that no one needs to you know, play games here. Meaning you leave them enabled, right, basically? Yes. Okay. So the problem for this is that we're going to basically not save power. Yeah, so quick on uh, one other thing you mentioned in my patch series, which is, was later addressed by another patch, is people are complaining, hey, sync state never comes in my hardware. I want to turn them off. Don't wait forever for sync state. And then some people do want to keep it. To actually go back to one of your earlier slides, I think the background slide, the requirements you have, two of them are actually kind of conflicting requirements. Um, not from, yeah, this one, that one. And the, yeah, right? First bullet is saying, I want to keep it on. But the last one is saying, don't disable if you don't have a driver, right? Right. So there's a kind of conflicting requirement. It's going to be based on your platform or your board. So that's like right now is a runtime con uh, command line. You can say, if you don't want to wait forever for sync state, you can set a timeout for it. Yeah, so I think. So by default, we should never turn off. But if somebody's like, you know what, don't wait forever for sync state, just turn it off anyway, then they can just use the flag and it's done. The clock framework is like very well not prepared to understand what to do here, right? It has no idea. And like using late in a call doesn't work. We know 100%. Right? Also, when all of them are modules, late in this call is completely useless because you're registering right. the clocks way after this is all done. It does nothing, what I can tell. It basically just makes the thing worse. I'm fully okay with you deleting right. it. I can try to fix up my patch to address this concern and your enable count concern, and then I think that should solve it all. If he removes the late init call altogether, uh -huh. we don't need to care about that. We only care about the disabling the clocks from the provider, basically. I mean, we still have to do that. No, we we'll need sync state for sure. The point is, what do you do about latent call? We can just delete it if it should be fine. Deleting latent call doesn't solve the problem. At least we don't need the clock disabled and used anymore. Sure. I think a lot of people's problems are- Only one minute left. Okay. A lot of people's problems are that they don't, they don't want disabling and use clocks at all. And that's what people keep approaching the mailing list with is saying, I don't want to do this. How do I not do it? 
What, what about the people who do want to disable unused clocks and it works fine for them right now? Right. Let's, who are they? Just you. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? <laughs> what company? <laughs> so uh, the, what I'm experienced with is the, the all winner platform where we have clock drivers that cover all the clocks and we've, like we, we haven't had, we haven't needed to use clock ignore unused in a decade because we, everything is fully modeled. Okay. Yeah. Mike, so are, are all your clocks available at late init and has all the clients probed and consumed their clocks at that time? No, but the drivers would re-enable cl any clocks that were disabled by the disable on these clocks when the drivers actually do probe. Okay.